Hey everyone, Kyle once again. Welcome back to another movie review. And... Now, uh, I said I was going to re re review this uh, film in December. And... Well, which now I am. And... This film, I would say... I just, I just had a lot of... I had a lot of fun watching. And... Probably just not everybody's cup of tea, basically, but but I, but I had a lot of fun with this film, and it's it's well, let's see, let's see, it's not a film that's supposed to be taken as seriously just because of the title of the film, and but despite despite you know because it's a it's a like a it's a low. It's a it's a very low budget film, and but it goes to show with a very low budget film, you can make it to make it to a fun creature feature film. And I said I'm gonna be reviewing this in December. I'm and I said I would, and I'm reviewing Mosquito, the 20th anniversary edition, or at least in um, 1995, directed by Gary Jones, which. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that he worked with uh, Sam Raimi when he did like his um, Evil Dead one and two and the Army of Darkness. I think he was like a special effects person. I think he was. I could be wrong. Um, but and, and, and if if that was true, um, which I, I, I believe it is, I think he just took. I think he took a look at a couple of things that from Sam Raimi and added a little stuff into this film. Which I'll get into, and I say he did, he did a good job directing the film. Um, he all, all the, um, he directed, but he helped write, helped write the film. Um, and of course, the reason why I wanted to review this in summer because all back in November, because the film stars Gunnar Hansen, who played the original Leatherface in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <clears throat> I did the video because um, it's before uh, after like a short time after this uh, came out on DVD and Blu-ray, he uh, in like the beginning of November he passed away, and I did a video on um, you know Rip Gunnar Hansen, and I said I'll I'll just review this in December, you know, close to the Christmas time and stuff. So I uh, just right time to review it. So I said it wouldn't. I'm doing it. Gunnar Hansen made rest in peace, but, um, which I already viewed the original, the text Chainsaw Massacre, but I wanted to review it, because I think he also did a really good job in the film. Um, and he went, and Gunnar Hansen will be missed. And so, and then, and I would say with this, uh, DVD, which also the film, I remember seeing this a long, long time ago, back on, um, TV. Which I forget it was on Sci Fi Channel because they said this was a direct uh, directed video and it was like released on Sci Fi Channel. But I forget if I did watch it on Sci Fi Channel, but I remember seeing it a long, long time ago. And I had I had fun I had fun watching and I haven't seen it uh since because it was a film that was like hard to come by because, well, like like a while a while back that on Amazon you can there was a there was a DVD but it would be it, but it was a very pricey would be like a little more expensive for me to get I'm not gonna waste my like like what was it, like fifty dollars maybe maybe even like a hundred dollars if I if I remember I'm not gonna cost so much for a film I got to get a DVD like that I'll just wait if they if they came out with a newer DVD of it in which they did at the time pricey to get and. Especially, I think it was like mostly like out of print and stuff, but well, now they did, and I really, I and with this a uh, twentieth anniversary edition, I really enjoy this um, edition. I think this is like one of the out of like the, the anniversary editions, you know, the certain to, to um, certain films. I think this is a very, this is a, this is a very, um, very good twentieth um, uh, anniversary edition. I think it's one of the best ones I've seen. Because it has all new features, um, new um, interviews. I really do enjoy the features in this film. I, I really do. 
Um, on the features has an audio commentary with the director and writer, uh, co-writer Gary Jones, uh, director of uh, photography, also on the commentary, and co-writer Tom Chaney, and the producer David uh, Thury. Bugging Out is um, the making of Mosquito. It's an uh, all-new documentary uh, with uh, with new features, including um, and interviews, new interviews with the co um, with with Gary Jones and Gunnar Hansen. And with um, the couple of the the act the actors, um, Tim Lovelace who plays the um, the the Tim Lo Tim Lovelace and Rachel Louis 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 uh, for the last name, they're they're the the couple the, the lead couple in this film. Um, uh, Mike War uh, no Mike Hard and Josh Beaker are from. Which uh, think um, I forget, I forget who those, those um those people are, but um, I forget what they, what they are, and um, and also including um the uh, director of photography um Tom Cheney and producer as well. Um, just no director of photography. The producer and then and also the producer. David Thury, and it's a pretty, it's a very, and it's, I would say it's a very good doc, a very good documentary. It's not a short documentary. It's a very, uh, uh, I would say a long documentary. I would say probably about um, a little, uh, maybe over thirty minutes. So I would say that I, I enjoy the documentary, and while talking, also with talking on the film, at least um, they were not giving giving this film crap about it. At least they talk and they're talking. At least they had they have fun making the film because it's a film about. Giant mosquitoes, you know, and just at least, which I'm glad for. At least they weren't shitting on the film, basically. At least, at least they admitted that they had fun with the fun making it, because they wanted to make a a film about giant mosquitoes, and then they did. Also, in the features has ex uh, deleted and extended scenes, and also an optional commentary with the director, behind the scenes footage, with also an o um, optional commentary with the director, trailer, and still gallery. It also includes some um, reverse some um, cover art, so like you have this cover here, and if you want to open it, take this out. If you want to switch, that goes from this cover to this cover, which is also a cool looking cover as well. You know, Gunnar Hansen with the chainsaw. Of course, there's the nod to Texas James Massacre, which is also in the film as well, which I'll get to. But it's also a cool looking cover though. Very cool looking. But this, is Bob, if I put it back to this one here, let me just put this back. And also inside 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 the DVD also comes like with them the original poster of um, Mosquito as well, which is also a good, cool looking thing as well. And there's a little saying here on the back as well, which is also cool. They have um, the original. They come with this little mini little poster of the original looking one. And even um, the cover of the, the DVD is also looks cool as well. It has a different um, look to it as well. So that I would say that they just they they went out they went all out I would say for this uh, 20th anniversary edition. They really went all they went went all out for this new interviews and artwork and all this stuff etc. The one thing I would, I would like to see um, for the like the on the making of with the new interviews I would like to see um because there's another actor. Which um, uh, Ron Ashton, who's um, st who's also in the film as well. He's um, Ron Ashton. He's also um, he's like the he's he's in that he's in that band called the uh, the Stooges, which is also I believe um, Eddie Icky Pop was in as well. The Stooges. I've heard I've heard the band the Stooges, but never hardly listened to the music though. But I've heard the band though. I wish I wish he, I wish he would um, 
was in all was in this new interview, all these new interviews as well. But um, sadly though, he think he's no longer he's no longer with us because he passed away, I believe, like in two thousand nine. But if he had, if he hadn't though, I would love to see his um new interview in this because he's in the film, which I'll get into though. But I just want to talk a little bit about the features because I really enjoy the features of this. I would say it's like one of the best looking doc um twentieth anniversary editions I've seen. I also like the cover work offer for this because it kind of looks like some people say it's like a little bit, little bit resemblance to Independence Day because the mosquito looks like the spaceship and how it's um. I would call this the mouth because that's where I forget what they they say they, in the film. They say the woman says what's this, the, this thing is called, but I forget what it's called. So I was called the mouth. It resembles the beam and going down the White House in Independence Day, and this kind of resembles the Independ the White House. So it's a cool looking cover as well. I like how they did a reference to that. And when the film came, the film came out. They did get a very limited uh, limited release. And for the budget, if you look at the film, you can, I couldn't tell this was made such a very low budget. This film would cost like two hundred. This film cost two hundred thousand dollars. And I look at this film like this film cost two hundred thousand dollars, and this is a really good low budget quality making for a creature feature film like this. Especially all the the look of the mosquitoes, the how it cost to make them. They did very well with the like, making of two hundred thousand dollars. Very well done. But of course, um, on IMDb has a very low rating, um, four point four on IMDb, which I would disagree. I put that much higher though. But at least as a, at least I would give it a sol they give it a solid sixty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, because at least they have no oh it's a, it is what it is you know. So. But getting into the film. Um. I, uh, has a, I like how the way it opens up. Um, a spaceship, an alien, well, an alien ship. Good looking model of it, I would say. Crash lands into this um, park or campground. And the way, and I like this also this good looking shot is how this mosquito is being born, how it comes up, you know, like being hatched and stuff. Good looking shot as well. I, I like that. And I also think there's also a cool idea that the mosquitoes. They drink the blood from the alien. They drink the alien blood, and that's how they <clears throat> grow to be giant size. I thought I, I liked that idea. I thought it was a cool, interesting idea. Because usually, when when it's like giant, when it deals with like giant bugs or other giant animals, usually they they grow to giant size because because of toxic waste. Usually, that's always an idea that how them they always grow with giant size because of always always toxic waste. Like a legged freaks, they the spiders grew big because of toxic because of toxic waste. Or alligator two the mutation that alligator grew to giant size because of toxic waste. So I like how they took an idea of I like how mosquitoes drink alien blood to grow giant size. I think that was a cool looking idea, kind of refreshing idea in a way for a creature feature film. So, <clears throat> and then. And then shortly after that, like you know, almost like in about um, a minute after that, we have the we have the the lead couple, uh, Tim Lovelace and um, Rachel Louis Louis uh, Louisville. They're driving because uh, she's like the new park ranger. Instantly, as they're talking, instantly they they just run over this giant mosquito. Like the mosquito is like flying across the road and just like splat. It just get splat as the um hit over by their car. I was like, wow, like like just the movie has like barely opened. You got alien uh mosquitoes drinking alien blood and all of a sudden all of a sudden pff, giant giant mosquito hit by a car. And it's practical, which I was I give really big props to cuz like I said before, they also use the the mosquitoes are real all are all practical. Giant mosquitoes, not just small ones. Giant mosquitoes, and they also have some good-looking shots of stop-motion anim animation as well. Um, and as I, I imagine, these, all these mosquitoes that they made, they just did what El did well without making of two of a of making of two hundred thousand dollar budget. Very well done. And they see it, and <laughs> it looks like oh, we hit something, and it's like 
and the girls oh it's like it's like a giant bug it's like this one's like it can't be it's like a, the, the guy the boyfriend's like this one's a, uh, of a giant bug and then 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 so there's some other that messes up their um car but they get where they need, they need to go and then there's this campground which um another park ranger by Hendrix, played by Ron Ashton He's like, like, so he's just like spying on some girls with binoculars, and um, he's, he gets called to his boss, you know, to to get rid of the mosquitoes and stuff. And he comes out with this um fog, which is like prevents the mosquitoes from around. And he says, "All right, mosquitoes, um, throw down. Let's throw down." But all in another thing, the acting hit. I would say the acting is not that is not that great. I can tell the acting is not that great, but. As long as I'm having fun with the film, I can let that I can let that go, because yeah, I know the acting is not the it's not the great, but I'm having fun with the film. I can let that go. I can let that slide, because all the other things are the reason why I have fun with the film. And then, and then you have Gunnar and you have Gunnar Hansen, and with his uh, brother and this other guy, they 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 robbed they robbed the bank and. One of the guys that goes to the porta potty and he sees a giant mosquito. He runs out and he gets chased after. And uh, Gunnar Hansen's brother, he's trying to shoot the giant mosquito, but he accidentally shoots the guy accidentally in the back and kills him. But then Gunnar Hansen he goes and gets a freaking shotgun and just starts and just blasts that giant mosquito away. Practical explosion of it. Yeah, that was that's good. That was that was good as well. Yeah, the, the guy misses and kill actually kills his uh par, um buddy, but Gunnar has to goes and gets a shotgun and just deliver just goes and shoots it. <laughs> Gunnar Hansen, I would say he did he did a good job in the film. May he rest in peace. And then it gets some good uh, gory death scenes as well. Like there's these two guys fishing. Um, one mosquito fl flies on one guy, which is like um which is this scene uh, right here. You can see it without the glare. The guy, the mosquito, the mosquito sticks some. Um, the I will, I will call it mouth. I forgot what, what the how it's properly called. Sticks and jams it right into that guy's eye, and then, <clears throat> and you can actually see, uh, um, the mosquito sucking the guy's blood. You can see it goes right through the the mouth and into the back of its body. The blood getting sucked in. Good looking effects as well. And the other guy runs into the into the forest, but he gets killed. He gets like st uh, gets stabbed in the chest. And or and then there's another scene with it with a at, when it's at night, and there's a couple having sex, of course. And um, one guy goes out of the tent, then the giant mosquito crawls into the tent and kills the woman, the naked the naked woman, by jamming its mouth right into her and her butt cheek, basically. And it's, it, it's it's funny at the same time, but. I'm still having fun watching. It's like stands right, stands it right into her punching and starts kills her that way, and then the other guy sees the other mosquitoes come and the guy's like, "Mother fuck!" Which of course that kind of a re um, scream kind of reminds me. Of course, probably a lot of people think is, of course, Troll Two with the "Oh my God" saying, "Oh my God!" Here it's just like it's like, it's like "Mother fuck." <laughs> Yeah, it was also, that's what I mean by the acting not that being that great, though. But I'm still having fun with the film. And also, there's another guy but played by Steve Dixon, which, he's a guy who's a meteorologist. He's chasing after, looking at looking uh, looking for meteors, and he gets, like, his, he has a device for radiation and stuff, and he has one that he sends these, like, like ones, like, around here, around where the park is, of course, that's where it landed. But it's spaceship, of course, but... It la well, he knows it landed right here, or landed, landed right around here. That's why he's there. And he meets he meets up with the, with the the couple, Meg and Ray. That's what their names are. Um, the woman's over the bridge. The the the, the boat with the dead fisherman inside. So, uh, see, she sees it, and they wonder what happened to him. And as they as they go as they uh, try to go, they both go different directions and. Uh, uh, Parks, Steve Dixon. He's in the campground. He's in the campground, and then he, next thing you see, you see a, a whole bunch. The campground is full with dead bodies, all dead bodies that's been sucked dry by the giant mosquitoes, which goes to show that these giant mosquitoes—they're not messing around. They just want to suck the blood out of people, and they did. 
the whole camp, the whole campground's full of dead bodies. And they go to the boss's office. That guy's been sucked dry as well. They find um, Hendrix, who hid underneath the boat, explaining that it's, it's giant mosquitoes. And so they take they take an RV, uh, the the RV camper. And then when it's at nighttime, they they meet up with um, Gunnar Hansen and his brother, but they have a gunpoint. But they manage to take away the weapons and tie him up in the RV. And as they're driving, um, the whole swarm attacks the RV. You see the little good clips of stop motion animation, which is pretty good, decent as well. Most of it is practical. Well, well not most of it is practical. It's all practical. When uh, the, 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 the mosquitoes are trying to get in the RV, they're just getting the shotguns, shooting them left and right. So I'm having um, one uh, like Gunnar Hansen like kills one with a, with a hatchet, but um, and he tries to hold the woman, you know, with the for threatening to kill the woman with the axe. They don't put down the weapons, but eventually um, the RV tips over. And they all get out, and Gunnar Hansen, his Gunnar Hansen's brother, he tries to get the money that they stole from the bank. And he gets attacked by the mosquito, and he gets um, punctured, and he gets sucked, sucked dry. And this is where you get the scene, pretty good looking the scene where that scene right there where the guy's eyes pops out, and as they pop out more, the the guy's eyes explode like balloons. They just pop. Good looking, good looking, good looking effect. How the guy gets sucked dry and the eyes just pop like balloons. That's a, that's a good, that's a good looking death scene. And they all, they all, they all run away. They go hide in this tunnel, and they get, they get like in the center of the tunnel. There's a whole bunch of tunnels where the, all of them are are coming in. They're all just shooting them left and right. And there's a like a funny scene where Ron Ashton um, Hendricks, um, he's like. Wait, I only got. I'm out of shells. Here's a couple. Two, of, two of them are fine, but this third one, it's got mosquito goop on it. And uh, the guy, um, uh, there was a uh, Ray goes, shut, up, shut up, Hendrix. Uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of the jokes that I chuckled at. He yeah, was like, this one's got mosquito goop on it. Shut up, Hendrix. So it's running low, so they get the use they, so they use their shirts to light them on fire because um, they don't like fire. So they put which one in each tunnel to make them go away, and they wait out until morning, and then they find this this um house, and they they get inside, they board all, they board the house up, and um, they they try to wait out, and here when Gunnar Hansen he gets um he finds a chainsaw, and of course the here's a his nod to um Texas Chainsaw Massacre where he says. I haven't, I haven't handled, I haven't touched one, I haven't handled one of these babies in over twenty years. Yeah, there's him. He's holding his. Can't see the cool. There, there you go. He's holding his chainsaw. Yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was 1974. This was 1995, so like 21 years. So it's over 20 years. I thought it was also a good nod to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I haven't handled one of these babies in over 20 years. And. Then they start. They they um, they break in, mosquitoes fly in, and there's a uh, um. Mi uh, Gunnar Hansen does. Uh, he get, he kills one mosquito. He chainsaws that one half. I would like to see him use the chainsaw to cut more mosquitoes up though, but he uses on one. Although he does use uh, just tries to swing it back and try to fend them off, of course though. But we see him chainsaw one. Um, Henrich gets attacked. He's down on the ground and um. Uh, Ray, he tries to he, he pulls the he pulls the, the mosquitoes wings off and throws it and shoots it. Then they're all trying to just shoot. They're all they run. They're running out of ammo. But did they get an idea to um to let them inside? But because um because they, they, they found that there's a hole down the basement. There's this hole. The basement's full of uh, eggs, which is the nesting ground. Full of mosquito eggs, and so they get the idea to let them all in at once because um, we'll fill the hole, we'll let all the gas out, and as we get out, we'll let the house on fire, explode, kill them all. So, so how they how they're going to get out is that um, there's a dumb waiter that goes um, up to the roof, one at a time. 
So, they let loose all the gas, and uh, Dixon, um, Steve Dixon, or his name is um, Parks, he uh, assists, assists a, a, up a detonator at three minutes, and um, the couple, Megan and Ray, they get up up to the roof safely. As um, Hendrix, um, he, he, as he tries to go up, um, the thing breaks, and he falls all the way down, which, of course, it's... He die. He dies from the fall because after that, you don't see him again. So you get. So you get the idea. So you get the idea that he died from the fall and the dumb waiter. So because, a uh, Gunnar Hansen said he wanted to go down there and save him though, but you don't see him again after that. So, so yeah. Uh, Ryan Ashton Hendricks. He died falling down, all the way down from the dumb waiter. So he falls to his death from that. But um, Gunnar Hansen said he wanted. He wanted to go down there and save him. And he goes. As he's going, he says, "Life's a bitch." With his chainsaw, he's down in the basement. He tries to fend the mosquitoes off as some of the eggs hatch, and then Parks, he, um, he tries to find a way to get out. But um, um, of course, of course, if you, everyone, if everyone, if I, if everyone gets, I guess what he does, they were going reference to this, which I'll get to. Um, Gunnar Hansen, either like um, he um, since like the house full of gas. Either way, Gunnar Hansen, he threw the chainsaw or the mosquitoes made him throw it. Because either way, the, 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 the chainsaw gets gets uh, thrown and it sparks against the wall and of course the whole house explodes. He dies, of course, but the whole house explodes. Good looking uh, effect of our model show of the house exploding. Actual explosion, no CGI explosion. So I like that. It was a good looking explosion of the house. As the couple, they jump off the roof, out onto the ground, and then Parks he survived it because he hid in a fridge. Now, that was the thing. If anyone thinks of oh, someone surviving in the fridge, they're instantly, they're instantly going to say Indiana Jones, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where Harrison Ford he hid in a fridge and survived from a nuclear explosion. I know. People, people, I, I. Well, first of all, I like, I like that film, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but. Everybody seems to give that film a lot, of, a lot of crap, but mainly one of the points because Indiana Jones survived a nuclear explosion in a fridge. A lot of people give that thing an idea, but I don't think it's not a. They give that, they give that a lot of crap, but it's not a bad idea, as I would say, because I've seen a lot of dumber ideas in films. But I mean, come on, that that's not. A, yeah, of course it's. It's 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 fantasy, you know. It's it's not supposed to be realistic. Indiana Jones is fantasy, okay. It's is of course it's not supposed to be realistic. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, I know people tend to give that idea. That's especially that scene a whole lot of crap though. But it's not the it's not the worst idea I've seen. I've seen a lot of dumber ideas, even dumber slash worse ideas. But. This this did it. This did it before Indiana Jones: The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Parks hid in a fridge and he survived the house exploding. He hid in a fridge. So before all that, this idea came first. Parks before the house exploded. Parks hid in a fridge and he survived. And then they take they they find him and then they walk off. So yeah. People can give that that scene, that film, a lot of crap though. But this one here, part this that this is like this did before it. You know, just parks in the fridge and survived in that. I don't think it's not that dumb of an idea. I just don't. I just don't think that. But I, I don't know what I say. I I I enjoy mosquito. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a fun. B movie. That's what it is. You know, it's a, for a little budget creature feature film. It's it's a it's a B movie. It's a fun. I would say a fun B movie, or even I would say a fun gem. I would say creature feature gem. I I hardly I hardly which I hardly use that word gem, but oh, so the acting is the, the acting is not all that great though. But um. I was I would say Gunnar Hansen. I think he did a good job. Even the 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 rest of the cast, they were not that bad at all. 
um, the guy with the couple, Rachel Luisel, Luisel, or Tim Lovelace, they were they were they were they were all right at best. Steve Dixon, I thought he also did pretty well as well um, as pretty well as well. Ron Ashton, I thought he was, I thought he did the best he could because there was a couple of jokes that he did I did chuckle at. And which is too bad. I would say that if he was still alive, I wish he would have done a new interview with this film. But he died. I think it was in two thousand nine though. So. Which is too bad, because I would like to get, I would like to get his see, get him his new interview in this though, but but he was all right as well. Got like a couple of his jokes I did like, you know, with the scene with the shotgun shell and um, when he came out with the the fog machine. But I uh, um, oh, I, th I think also that um, uh, Josh. Uh, Beaker, I think it was the guy that, um, to play Gunnar Hansen's brother, I think I'd be wrong, I guess. I, if that was who it was, at least, um, probably talking about that's his death scene, probably. I think that was the guy it was. But I enjoy the, I enjoy the film. The cast, so the, most of the cast, for the, so here's the, the, the cast, I thought they, even though the acting sounded like good, I thought they all did a pretty decent job. Gunnar Hansen and I did like. Especially with his with his lines, especially his nod to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre with the, with the chainsaw, and another line last pitch, you know. Um, he, I like to get get a good couple of shots and shooting one mosquito with a shotgun, chainsawing one, which I would like to see him use it more to chainsaw more mosquitoes, though. But um, the mosquitoes, um. They wanted to, because I, well, I at least will watch the film look like they did have fun making the film while doing it. Because they wanted to make a giant mosquito film, and they did. And they did a, and they do a, and they did a very good job making this film. I could say that why they had fun making the film. They, they want to make it giant mosquitoes, not just smaller ones, because... I would even say this is, like, this is the best uh, um, killer mosquito film, I would say. Because there were there was there was another one that did that came up before this was back this was nineteen ninety five there was another one called back in nineteen ninety three called Skeeter, which the miss which I saw that once and that film was horrible. You barely saw the giant mosquitoes and they did they were like about this big, and the death scenes were lame and well there was only like a couple but yeah those were lame. That was not that good of a movie. This is how, this is how you do it the right way, better than the mosquito. And there was also another one called um, I remember another one long time ago that I, I watched on Sci-Fi Channel. There was one called Mansquito where I remember there it was an escaped convict and he got into an accident and he transforms into a giant mosquito. Hence the title Mansquito. That film. That film was not that was not that great at all. So why we would say this is like, this is like the best um, killer mosquito film. It w I would say done the right way because there's giant mos there's giant mosquitoes. They're all practical, which of course the good mixture of stop motion animation. Especially especially for a film that costs two hundred thousand dollars, especially to make a lot of those giant mosquitoes. They did it very well with the with the budget that they had. It had been during that limited release. It made like nine hundred something thousand dollars, so it was a success even with the limited release. Um, the film's on for ninety two minutes, but it go to went at a very very good pace. Um, the score I thought was pretty decent. I like the idea that they drank alien blood from a dead. Alien, that's how they grew giant. The death scenes I liked, especially with the guy, the, the gunner has his brother, who see him get sucked in, his eyes pop out and blew up like balloons. And it shows that the mosquitoes aren't messing around because he's saying the whole campground is filled with dead bodies. And I really enjoy that. I also enjoy, also enjoy the features of this film. I think it was like a very um, good in, new in depth on the making of this film with the. Interviews with the actors and the director and other the other crew members, the producer and director of photography and such. I like the commentaries as well. 
Um, at least I'm glad at least they were they were not shitting on the film. At least they, they said they had they have fun making it because they wanted to make a giant mosquito film and they did. So I can see why. Very 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 good documentary and commentaries. It was a very it was, a, it was a, I would say this is a very good this is a very good 20th anniversary edition. Especially for a film that was like hardly known because direct video and on TV and stuff. I, I'm glad they went all out for this. I think it's a very, this is a very good 20th anniversary edition. I'm glad. I'm glad I have this. Um, Gunner and like I said, I wish that Ron Ashton was alive enough to um, do this though. But like I said, passed away in 2009. And I'm which in my case, I'm also glad that Gunnar Hansen got a chance to do a new inter, uh, an interview with this before he passed away, which is kind of ironic enough. This film came out with him new with he did a new interview and then shortly after he passed away. Kind of ironic, I would say. Um, which I'm, which I'm, but I'm glad he did um, an interview before he passed. Which I'm glad for. Gunnar Hansen may he rest, may he rest in peace. Will be missed. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, Mosquito. Definitely check the film if you haven't seen it. I had a lot of fun with this film. I did. I really had. A, I was like, was one of the great. Um, Creature feature films, which I even which I would put up there with this, because that film is underrated is underrated as hell. I will keep on mentioning Deep Rising as much as I want to because I love that film. That film deserves a whole lot more love and respect, just like this film did. I, I, uh, I would be I would say if I had this much fun while watching it, I wouldn't say well, I won't love it though. But I would put definitely like I would say great. I would say. Because I had so much fun with this film, I did. I had so much fun. Deep Rising, I had so much fun. I'll just I'll put this like up there with this, which except that film flopped, which I still call bull crap on that. I'll even keep mentioning Deep Rising because that film deserves more love and respect, and it's underrated as hell. So yeah, so that's my review for uh, for um, Mosquito 20th Anniversary Edition. Great 20th anniversary edition. I really do enjoy this one. One of the best ones I've seen. With all with the really enjoyable features. I really do enjoy the features. So yeah. And Gary Jones, I would say he did a great job directing. I, which I was never going to say about him. I forgot to say about why he like it took a things from, from Sam Raimi. Because one thing I forgot to say, I like I the I I I um, point of view shots of the mosquitoes. Where they're chasing other people. It's like literally like how the way the how the way their the camera is like they're how they're going avoiding trees and under a branch, which reminds me of Evil Dead. Like the way the goes they went after Bruce Campbell, how the camera angle POV shot goes after Bruce. Just reminded just reminded me of Evil Dead. No, I'm I think that's why um, Gary Jones when he worked with Sam Raimi took a page from that from that just like the point of view shot chasing after the people how the way the cameras worked you know. Which is also not a bad thing. Take something good from that and put it in this. It's not a bad idea at all. How the way it's like I said, it's moving past the trees under a branch. It's like how the Evil Dead was when it was after Bruce Campbell. I thought that was kind of that was also cool as well. Yeah, I forgot to go there. I mentioned it. Otherwise, I forgot to say it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Mosquito is a is a gore drenched tale made with traditional stop motion. And practical effects. From the makers of the Blob, Prince of Darkness, and They Live comes a giant monster cult classic. I would say it deserves a cult classic, because I really do. I really do enjoy this film, and I really had fun with it. Keep me saying I keep on repeating myself, but like I say, when I, ha when I have much fun watching this, why not say it a lot of times? It was pretty, pretty much close to me saying it's a unique. Unique creature feature film, I would say. Anyway, that's it. We won't go in four and forty minutes, and so I'll stop here. Thanks for um, once again, Gunnar Hansen. May rest in peace. And I'm glad I did, I did this review because I said I would do a review review in December, and now I did. My review. That's that's, what, that's my review of uh, Mosquito. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned on the next movie review. Later.